You are Commodore Business Machines and you've decided that you are going to release the next great computer for the masses. The Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games too. So you probably need an accessory for it. You probably want to use that control port or that joystick port, and you want to create your own joystick. So what do you do if you're Commodore, you're sitting in a boardroom and you say, hey, we need a joystick for our Commodore Big 20. Well, you go ahead and you design one. And so you come out with the Commodore Vic 1311 joystick. But did you design it yourself because Surely somebody knew that Atari also had a joystick out called the CX-40 that looked remarkably like the 1311. What was Atari's reaction? It's probably what you think it was. Hey, before I tell you all about the VIC-1311 joystick, make sure you do all that stuff down below. Leave a comment, thumbs up, like, all that business. And don't forget, you can become a subscriber to the channel by clicking that button down below. Also, be sure to visit buymeacoffee.com slash retrocones to learn how you can support this channel. So this joystick was designed to go along with a VIC-20. Wait a minute. And the color and styling is designed to match this device right here. Now, it's abundantly clear that the Commodore VIC 1311 joystick was a clone of the Atari Steve Bristow designed CX-10 that debuted with the original Atari 2600 in 1977. The CX-10 used springs and contact switches and was manufactured for a year before it received a cost reduction design, the CX-40, created by designer James C. Asher. So who designed the Commodore VIC 1311? I think we can give original credit to Steve Bristow for the exterior design and James Asher for the internals. Let's see just how similar the Commodore VIC 1311 joystick is to the Atari CX40. Yeah, look at that. This one has never been opened before. You can see all the fresh plastic coming out of there. There will be fresh 1980s air inside this case. All right, here we go. Here's what it looks like right here. Things look, looks good right here. Let me see if I can. There we go. We can pop that off right there. And I just lost my little spring, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. That's, that's going to go here, but we'll make sure and keep that. So here's the inside right here. Got our contact switches here. This right here, this is usually what breaks and everything is solid right here this piece right here there's usually a crack here when these break now what we want to do is we want to look at the cx40 here and see if it looks like this because the claim is that commodore did not recreate this well enough that it caused these to break more frequently than these thus harming atari's reputation in the joystick world now this is not an original joystick i had i found this and it looks like somebody's been biting on the ends Ugh, yeah it was good enough though. I told the seller, I didn't care if it worked or not. I just needed a joystick. And when we open it, we will actually be able to tell if this one is broken or not. Now this one, these screws are coming out a lot easier than the other one, the Commodore, which makes me think that this one has been opened before. Oh, well, although that one seemed really tight, uh, maybe not. A lot of fresh plastic though, I will say that. See all that plastic right there? Okay, same thing. We got the button here. Let me get the spring before I lose it. I do not want to lose these springs. Everything looks identical right there. I mean, it is. The board color is different, but the runs that they used to, to print these printed circuit boards are exactly the same. Look at that. Same shape, same angle. Although this right here, well, this is a little different. This right here is a little more of a rounded than this one is, but you can see it's very similar. Little more space in between these two than there is these two. But other than that, pretty similar. Fire buttons look identical, except, check this out, there is some markings right there with a little serial number, but there is not on the Commodore version. That's interesting. They are using, it looks like Commodore is using a more translucent plastic here. See that? 
here. This one, uh, this one is not broken. Again, a lot of times the reason these don't work is because they're broken here. So this one actually does, this one does work. I did check it, uh, but you can see they're very similar, but not necessarily identical. Okay, this is different right here, and this is gonna be hard to see, but these pins right here that make contact with the electrical switches right there, there's a little nub, nub right there. This nub is bigger. You also have some differences in here. We have, and let's see if you can read this. It says right there, you have a number right there. And over here you have nothing, but we do have right here, a number two, let's see if I can get that for you. Right there, number two, right here, we have nothing. So there are some marking changes on the inside. So definitely not a, one for one recreation duplicate didn't use the same manufacturer but recreated it so close uh, that it was just a little bit too close i mean after all take a look at this commodore really did steal the look and feel of this joystick and the only thing they really did differently other than some minor technical specifications is slap their logo on it send it out there for sale and say get ya commodore vic 1311 joystick for ten dollars so what happened? Who signed off on this blatant intellectual property ripoff over there at Commodore? Who knows? I wanted to find out and even reached out to Bill Hurd and the Commodore International Historical Society, which led me to a dead end. So what I found was there wasn't a lot online about the 1311 joystick, so I turned to a few books I have in my library, one of them being On the Edge, The Spectacular Rise and Fall of Commodore by Brian Bagnall. And uh, this has been a fun book. It's a fun read. It's part of a series. You, you can get uh, the Amiga years. And then uh, recently I've been reading about the C65 in the final years. And so that's been fun to learn about the origins of the Commodore C65, which leads to one of my favorites, the Mega 65. But anyway, back to the 1311. I thought I found something here that would be useful. So I'm reading through Computers for the Masses uh, during the 1981 phase of Commodore, uh, which is chapter nine. I go to chapter 10, I find, all right, here we go, VIC-20 peripherals. So I read through the VIC-20 peripherals only to find that there is no mention of the 1311 joystick, which is a shame because I was hoping Brian might have some information that would lead us to the creation of this 1311 joystick, who's responsible, who's the designer, but unfortunately, I have not been able to find it in On the Edge. What I did find in the book, though, was that Michael Tomchek was the product manager and was responsible for most of the products and peripherals around and surrounding the VIC-20. So we have to assume it was Michael Tomchek and Jack Trammell who decided to just sign off on the paperwork to recreate this 1311, and then they would suffer the consequences later, which would turn into a lawsuit. So the first call to action for this video is if you have information that can lead us to the individual responsible for signing off, not designing, but signing off on this joystick replication, please leave a comment down below or contact me, retrocombs at iCloud.com. And also some proof would be nice. Since the Commodore VIC-20 used the same 9-pin DIN connector found on the Atari 2600, joysticks were interchangeable between devices, one of the very few hardware standards found on computers in the early 1980s. Personally, the Atari CX40 joystick was the first joystick I used on my VIC-20. We own the Sears Video Arcade, the Sears version of the Atari 2600, and I would move a controller back and forth between devices, probably like many of you who own both devices. I never purchased another joystick specifically for my Commodore VIC-20. So before you think Commodore pulled one over on Atari, au contraire mon frere, Atari filed a lawsuit on October 11th, 1982 against Commodore. Here's a lawsuit article announcement from the October 14th, 1982 Philadelphia Inquirer. Interestingly reads, the king of Prussia manufacturer of home computers and video games was sued by Atari. King of Prussia was sued? The electronic game subsidiary of Warner Communications Inc., which charged that Commodore infringed on patents relating to Atari's joystick controller used in video games and home computers. The suit filed in U.S. District Court in New York asked that Commodore be required to stop making, using, or selling Commodore's VIC-20 joystick the control for video games. I find it very interesting that we had to announce what a joystick was back in the day.
And there's an even longer article in the November 9th, 1982 edition of the New York Times. Atari said it had won a temporary injunction against Commodore business machines that prevents Commodore from making and selling joystick controllers for video games and home computers that are imitations of the one made by Atari. The ruling affects the joysticks made by Commodore for its popular VIC-20 home computer. Oh, once again, joysticks are the handheld box used to operate video games, more educating the consumers out there in 1982. We find a preliminary injunction was granted by Judge Richard Owen in the Federal District Court. A Commodore spokesman reached at the company's offices in Pennsylvania, said company officials were returning from the annual meeting in New York and thus were not available for comment. Strange how people were often not available for comment. The injunction may not pose much of a threat to VIC-20 sales, however, because that computer can also use the Atari joystick for game playing, as I mentioned, like most of us did back in the day. Atari, the leading maker of home video games, filed suit October 11th, contending that the Commodore joystick infringed on its patents. Atari said that Commodore joystick looked like the Atari product except for the color, yet had some flaws that would cause it to break prematurely. Yeah, because those Atari joysticks never broke, did they? Atari said it did not want customers to associate the broken joysticks with Atari. Finally, the Trade Rag Info World, hopefully they know a little bit more about computers, covered the story in their November 1982 edition. Atari wins joystick battle. Atari Inc. recently won a preliminary injunction against Commodore Business Machines, Inc. in a case involving Commodore's manufacture and sale of an imitation Atari joystick controller for its VIC-20 home computer. Atari had filed a lawsuit October 11, 1982, in which it claimed that Commodore infringed on Atari's patents covering the joystick that Atari sells for its video computer system and home computer products. Commodore had tried to copy the Atari controller exactly, changing only the color to white and adding the Commodore name. So if we copied it exactly, wouldn't we get the same hardware problems with breaking joysticks? And that was stated by Michael Sherrard, patent counsel for Atari. Commodore allegedly missed a few important design features that make the Commodore joysticks likely to break prematurely, according to Sherrard. A spokesperson for Commodore declined to comment on the case while it is still in litigation. But Commodore finally replies, Irving Gold, Commodore's chairman, says, we sold a very small quantity of the joystick controller, probably because they were breaking, and discounted its sale four months ago because it wasn't profitable. And then finally, we go to learn that Commodore has appealed the ruling made by the U.S. District Court Judge Richard Owen. And that ruling was that Commodore was further prohibited from manufacture or distribution of the joystick pending further rulings in the joystick case. And then Atari has to have the last word and says, we will pursue our legal rights against anyone who attempts to ride the coattails of Atari's success and creativity. And this was Raymond E. Kasser, chairman and chief executive officer of Atari. Atari is also seeking monetary damages, although the amount has not yet been determined. Now, I was unable to find out if any money changed hands in my research. If you happen to know, let us know. Now, there are some rumors on the web that says that Commodore was ordered to destroy all remaining inventory of this joystick. Now, I've not seen evidence that supports this claim. And since you can still find a ton of these on eBay, I kind of doubt that that occurred. But I'll tell you what, if you're looking for one of these on eBay, they are pricey. But I did find this memo on the Commodore International Historical Society Facebook group, thanks to Dave McMurdy. Also, thanks to all the folks over at that Facebook page who helped me research this video. This is an internal memo related to that case sent to Commodore employees. And this is from the personal collection of Michael Tomchek. And it's from Richard A. Blumenthal. The date on it is November 22nd, 1982. And it reads, as you know, Commodore was recently enjoined for manufacturing, selling, distributing, offering for sale, advertising, promoting, or displaying the old joystick controller. This means that we cannot sell any old joysticks that are returned. You cannot show the old joysticks at any trade shows. You may not use any brochures or advertisements containing the old joystick. Please do not make further shipments of these brochures to dealers or anyone else. So that does not say anything about destroying current stock. What it does say is you can't sell them. And oh, by the way, all that literature we produce that has that representation in an image, get rid of it, strike it. And there's even a clone of a clone, as you can see in this image, that looks just like the Commodore clone of the Atari 2600, only sans the Commodore logo and the words, I love this, joy stick. The Atari Compendium lists this one as 
manufacturer unknown. If Commodore did find a manufacturer in Taiwan to recreate the Atari joystick, did that same company decide to sell their recreation? If you have one of these joysticks, please reach out to me. I'd love to know where you got it, how you obtained it, and if there's any markings on the bottom. In a strange twist of fate for me, I too found myself on the wrong end of Atari's intellectual property when I tried to use a variation of the Atari 2600 joystick for my original logo. And instead of researching this after the fact, I should have done some due diligence. If I had, I would have seen that Atari is still protecting their joystick design and IP as shown in this Bloomberg Law article from January 19th, 2021. Interestingly, it seems that my favorite retro recreation, the Hyperkin Trooper, was also a target, but a settlement must have been made because those are still for sale. My guess is that Atari gets a cut for each Hyperkin sale, or there was enough modification to the original design that they were able to come to an agreement. And if you're interested in that Hyperkin Trooper, I have the link to it down in the video description below, as well as links to everything else I've mentioned in this video. Now, how did I find out that Atari was protective of their Atari 2600 joystick IP? Check out this email from Spreadshop when I tried to have merch such as this shirt for sale with my original logo. We are sorry for any inconvenience, but we cannot print any likenesses to the Atari gaming console. As stated on our legal FAQ, we will not print photos, caricatures, or any other artwork depicting a copyrighted creation. This continued protection of the Atari joystick design led me to modify my logo based on another joystick no longer under protection, the Commodore 1311, but we'll come back to that. After the VIC-20 joystick fiasco, Commodore released their own new originally designed joystick and it was gonna be great. And it was the Commodore 1311, not the VIC-1311, just the 1311. Previously, we tore apart the Commodore and the Atari joystick, the original Commodore joystick. Let's break apart the replacement 1311 and see what makes this joystick tick. First thing we notice is the same kind of four screw. As a matter of fact, boy, those look like those could maybe even be in the same locations there. First of all, you will notice that the screws are different first. So a little different design all around on this. I'm curious, these holes look like exactly the same holes locations as these. They are not the same, they're a little different. So nothing, not even those specs were brought over from the mold, I thought for a minute maybe. So this is interesting, it has this post right here, which all of them have. Uh, but you can see here, this is the board. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Oh, look at this, a little upgrade here. This is actually, this is kind of upgraded. This has a nice film across it to protect these switches. And then if we look at the mechanicals, we still have the spring here for the button. You can see that. We have some markings on the button. Let's see what that says. Hopefully I don't lose our little spring. Looks like we have a serial number there. Let me turn that around for you. And then we have a similar design that we had on the original. This is very similar, it's just a little smaller diameter, but everything about this is identical to this right here, except just, a, is it smaller? I think it's smaller, let me see. And this comes out a lot easier. Oh, look at this. So inside, this matches the prism shape of the stick itself right here, instead of just being cylindrical, although it is cylindrical from here, but these little fins right here to make it fit into here nicely. And let's see if it's the same diameter. Oh, it is, it's exactly the same diameter. As a matter of fact, looks like everything is the same except these posts are a little thinner and this is a little bit longer right here, but everything else without taking some measurement devices on it looks to be exactly the same. Who designed the 1311? Well, that continues to be a mystery. Again, neither Bill Hurd nor the Commodore International Historical Society was able to help me find out who designed this 8-bit controller. And I'd love to know because look at this thing. This is just gorgeous. This new design includes a smaller base, a button in the middle of the base so it can be used by both left-hand and right-hand users, Commodore VIC-20 computer colors, a three-foot cable, a triangular or prism profile control stick, Commodore branding right there on the top, directional indicators, and a cost of about $10 in 1982 money. But this joystick was also controversial, but not for the same reasons as its predecessor. 
This one was notorious for being a horrible joystick. It was a hand herder. Like the original Commodore VIC-1311, this one broke a lot too. I happen to have a working unit. I mean, this thing is so bad, surely nobody would clone this like Commodore cloned the Atari 2600, right? Wrong. According to the Atari Compendium, a Taiwanese variant of the Commodore 1311 joystick found its way to the market but opted for a cool blue button rather than the red one found on the Commodore 1311 joystick. And of course, they removed the Commodore branding. It's been suggested online that this was the same manufacturer Commodore used, but then they decided to release their own version. This is another one of those joysticks out in the wild I've not seen. If you have one of these joysticks, also please contact me. And this brings me back around to my logo. I love the look and design of this joystick and recreated my new Retrocombs logo based on this joystick. And my viewers like it. They even helped me refine it. Several of them commented on my Discord that this new logo was a better representation of my content since I have a heavy focus on Commodore computers and the Mega 65 rather than Atari. So I now have items in my Spread Shop store that you can go and grab my logo on hats, shirts, stickers, and mugs. And yes, that link is down below. So that concludes this video about the controversial Commodore VIC 1311 joystick. If you have more information about this joystick, please reach out to me. And then while we're at it, I know this video is primarily about the original, but let's look at the replacement too. Let's see if we can find out who designed this Commodore joystick. I'd love to know who is behind not only this, but also this. Thanks for watching and Retrocombs out.